You got one life for crying out loud. You might as well just give it all you got. The Deej, Dan Jordan. Your daily dose of reality. Your daily dose of the Deej. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I need my daily dose of the Deej. I make the news. I don't watch the news. I'm a leader. The sales energizer, Dan Jordan. Listen, don't worry how to sell, baby. Worry about why people buy. And it's fun. You don't need a five-hour energy. All you need is the sales energizer. Just when I think it's not going to be as fun as the one before, each one gets successful, successfully, successfully better. Success. What's the word I'm looking for? What's it going to take to get you into this car today, huh? And now, please welcome the sales energizer, Dan Jordan. Oh, man. Oh, man. You got to shorten that intro because I'm standing here like a goofball for 15 seconds before it comes on. I think I'm going to make it longer. I just love watching you with your hands up. No one else No one else that's live could see it, but oh, uh, it, it's oh, absolutely so you, hilarious. You oh, see yeah, it ahead I, of time? Absolutely. Oh my gosh. That's the, that's those things when you, when you, when you get caught singing in the car and you don't realize it and then the person next to you joins in. You ever do that? You ever join in with someone? Or, or when you turn this way and you scratch the side of your face and someone thinks, oh, you're, thinks you're picking your nose. Yeah. Yeah. And then you look at it. <laughs> or maybe well, that's, maybe that's just me. That's just taking you know, it a little too far. There's different things that you used to, you know, now uh, it's no big deal. It used to be that uh, you would see somebody talking to themselves, you know, in New York city and uh, you think they're crazy. Now everybody talks to them like while you're walking and talking, nobody even pays it any mind. No, that used to be the thing when you had the uh, the little Bluetooth when those things first came out and people were walking around, you know, just kind of talking to themselves and they look like lunatics now. Yeah. So there's human normal. beings. There are, there's human beings that are born that actually have, you know, cognitive function that are in the real world that have never turned a record over. You know, they've never lived in that world. Vinyl, vinyl made a comeback. Oh, it did. So turning a record over is, I mean, we could, we could speak about that. Well, thank that you very today, much for spoiling, for spoiling my whole thing. I had a, <laughs> I gave a, uh, sorry to I, bring truth. Into I, I your, gave a, your agenda. A, a, a speech a long time ago at this company that, uh, they made these, they were a machine shop basically. And they made all these cool things. And I, and I was there for their sales meeting and I was talking about, I wanted to, you know, a little about the companies. So, uh, you know, so they'd like me and all that stuff. And so, um, I was telling, listen, everybody's a salesman. And I, and I said, I don't care if you're a, uh, if you're a, a truck driver or in human resources or the guy who changed the gasket on this thing. And I put a picture of something that they made, which is actually an RV LP propane regulator, dual tank, automatic changeover valve. Pretty cool. And so I gave that whole speech and I said to the guy, I said, listen, I don't care if you're everyone's a salesman. I don't care if you're a truck driver and human resources or a guy who changes the gasket on this thing, which of course we all know is an RVLP propane regulator, dual take automatic change. Some guy in the back of the room, similar to you, Chris Stone, looked at me and said, hey, you know, that particular unit, you don't need to change the gasket, you know, like ruined my entire thing. And I thought to myself, that's never happened before until I met you, Chris Stone. How do you remember all those little minute details? Like, say that again, gasket, get whatever. The RV LP propane regulator dual tank automatic changeover valve. Yeah. I'll tell you, I'll tell you exactly how you do it by wanting to remember it. Okay. And anything you really want to do, you, you commit the time and effort to do that. And uh, if, if what you commit to do is knowing how to, to, to sell things, well, then you have to practice that. If you're, you're committing to learning how to be the best marketer in the world to help your company survive, you've got to study and practice that. But not only practice the skills on how, how, to, how to market, but more importantly, how your customer likes to buy. How's that for a, a segue and a setup for you? I'm laying it up for you. You are? 
that I'm, I'm not following. All I'm thinking about is the fact that I, every time I can't remember what my wife wants me to remember, like she'll watch this and she'll say, well, you just really don't want to remember yeah. and to commit to knowing you know, when my birthday is or our anniversary or, or whatever. Well, That's listen, all I can think about. If you want to know all the so. reasons why you're wrong, uh, ask your wife. That's right. what they're there for. That's right. I was setting you up for the segue to introduce our guests. Oh, oh I, I thought you were going to do that today. Understanding I mean, your buyer this is, this, and that This whole is thing. the kind of planning that you get the avid viewer of, of DJ Live. This is the kind of planning that goes in to these uh, these shows. It's just, it's beyond, uh, beyond. Well, compare. I'm really but, interested in this because listen, I have, uh, you know, basic understandings of how people think. Uh, and then my kids kind of grew up and they became to this certain age. And I realized, I don't know, I don't know what the heck's going on in, in their life. You know, I, I don't know how, I don't know how they think. I don't know how they make decisions. And I figured the best way to do that is uh, to ask them. And so that's why we got these two jokers here today. So ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome from Liger Partners, Callie Driver and Aaron McWhorter. Welcome, Hello. guys. Hi. Oh, look at that. You see that? Look how dressed up she got. <laughs> What's the dog's name? Brinkley. This is Brinkley. Brinkley. Yeah. See, when we see now growing up, when uh, <laughs> when we want the reason why anybody you know, our age, well, I, how I'm not going to ask how old you are, of the age that you are. Yes. Um, <laughs> I would get a dog. You said that we'd get dogs so you could meet, uh, so you can meet girls. So is that why you got a dog? No, you know what? I have always been obsessed with gold retrievers and I've wanted one since I was a kid. Um, and so I said when I graduated college and I had his name picked out for, gosh, probably about three years. Um, and I just said after college, I was like my first big girl purchase. I know most people either get like a new car or mm -hmm. my house or whatever. No, mine was a dog. So, um, yeah, so I got really? him and he's been the best. Yeah. Well, so, so how did you pick... How did you pick the breeder from which to buy that dog? From you whom know to buy that I, dog? You know, and, and I'm one of those people that did get him from a breeder, but I actually had uh, two friends that recommended. I got him a breeder up close to Athens, Georgia, and I had two friends that recommended this place and they had gotten their dogs from. And so I went to visit. And of course, if you go to visit puppies, you're going to come home with one. So I went to visit and sure enough, a couple weeks later, <laughs> He was home with me. So you so, see that? You see, everybody yep. has all these little fancy ways of getting people's yeah. attention and marketing and selling, but it came down yeah. to what? I had two friends or that mouth. recommended this. Yep. That's well, because sometimes with breeders, you have to be a little careful. And I feel like with, with that kind of shopping, it, it it's one of those, you know, you want a friend recommendation. You don't want to go on Craigslist like well, well, or something. Hey, well, that's an odd question. And I see your arm. Are you okay? You still doing heroin? Ha ha. What was this? I, I was trying so hard not to hold up my arm. Okay. Well, this, that's it. And it, it. Yeah. So I've also can you know, advertise. These one of kids our, today. Our, this is comfort release band aid. So also can advertise the oh, client. Nice. Um, oh, we have a new sponsor. There we go. Um, <laughs> but no, this was courtesy of Brinkley. This was what happens when you're. 60 pound dog tangles you up and you face plant on our walk. So that was that, but very good. Yeah. Well, speaking of tangled, we also have a uh, curly haired baby face over here. <laughs> yeah, like that's you know how long we've wanted baby face on the yeah. show, Dan. Oh. So I, I met, uh, Aaron's your name, right? Indeed. <laughs> yes. Okay, so I, I met Aaron months ago and I listened to him on a podcast and I thought to myself, this kid is so well-spoken and he's so clear. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know the content that comes out of his mouth quite yet, but I know it sounds good. And so uh, he's apparently also a big marketing guy because he knows how people like himself think. So how did you get into this business? Well, um, originally I started working with an old colleague of yours, actually. Hal Coleman, uh, I think we talked. You about know how? That. That's right. You know yeah, Hal yeah. Coleman. Is uh, he watching? Somebody's got to call Hal Coleman. Somebody should call Hal Coleman because uh, uh, 
Hal got me started because he was working with my dad, actually, with his business. And he got me started working with some of his clients, making content for them. And then I kind of had a knack for it, a passion. So when I went to UGA, I studied marketing there. And then, you know, the rest is history. Go dogs. <laughs> Short history, though. Yeah, I, 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 I like when, uh, you know, 15-year-olds talk about history. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, my, my long life and career that I've had by now. You know, there used to be a thing, uh, it, you know, it was, uh, you know, back in the 60s, and so I, I wasn't alive then. I, this is my parents' type of thing. <laughs> okay. But there, there was a saying, don't trust anyone over 30. Uh, mm -hmm. Because, you know. That, why you is know, that? Why was that? Because they're idiots. The, I mean, <laughs> it's. It's the dumbest thing. Even when I was a kid, really, I I would think don't trust anyone under thirty. Right. Well, you know, they were, that was during the Vietnam War, and so they were trying to say, you know, okay. these grown ups don't know anything but getting people into war and all that stuff, and so don't wow. trust anyone, you know. And that was the whole thing. But I always thought that was uh, idiotic. However, things have changed, and by change, I mean that uh, people of your age in your world are like the biggest consumers. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, people my age who don't understand you at all <laughs> are trying not to, to get. Uh, well, so why don't you tell us here what? <laughs> no, and I, and I, and listen, I want to know. Dan, this, it's not that hard. <laughs> and, and eventually, well, it, it's just, I think I know uh, what you, you gotta think. you got to get on TikTok and watch Tiger King. You're set. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, that's right. Yeah, she was <laughs> telling me to, uh, by the way, I was I was going to watch, she mentioned somebody. Well, who was that person you mentioned from that show? Joe Exotic. No, there was a girl. Oh, you Carol Baskin. Know? Yeah, so she said some sort of joke and she referenced this woman. Mm -hmm. And I had no idea... Who, he thought we were the, talking about the Lion King. Let's preface this. He thought we were talking about the Lion King this entire you are, time. Uh, you are kidding me. No. He asked at one point, he goes, oh, wait, where's Muthasta? Now, let's, let's <laughs> point out his name is Muthasta. But the whole time, he goes, wait, 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 wait. All these people talking about Tiger King, they weren't talking about the Lion King? And this we were like, amazing. oh, no. <laughs> what yeah. do you think? So I had no frame of reference <laughs> of what they were talking about. Now, if I'm trying to sell to this group of people, <laughs> but but it's it's yeah. conversely, what if you're trying to sell to us? You know, some people in my price, uh, you know, age yeah. bracket have some, you know, jack also that we like to spend. So, so what do you guys do in the marketing world? Do you try to inflict your frames of reference upon us, or do you do research? and find out what these uh, guys think about and try to do it that way. I'll ask uh, Babyface. All right. <laughs> so, and you can feel free to disagree with me with this, but <laughs> I consider effective selling um, to be founded on relationships, right? Not just um, in terms of the people that you're selling to liking you, but also that they feel like that you empathize with them and understand their needs and their the problems that they're facing. And so, when when we go through that process, the challenge that you often run into is trying to relate to people who have a different background than you, but also different priorities that's kind of fundamental to their stage of life. So you're selling something and you want to tailor it to their perspective, but without losing your kind of perspective, if that makes sense. That sounds a little confusing, but you're coming into a selling situation as an expert in your brand or your product. And you don't want to lose that in the process of trying to relate to the other party, but you also don't want to try to force the other party to uh, adapt to your style of communication, your pace of like the pace of the deal that you prefer or your values as far as what you consider valuable about the brand. So it's kind of this balance between uh, leveraging your expertise, but also focusing the entire pitch on the needs and preferences of the prospect. How is you that? see, <laughs> it, I mean, and now listen, this is exactly what I said. Sounds beautiful. I have no idea what he's talking about. Give me. <laughs> no, I you want the dumbed down I, I, version. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I actually, I, I, give me an example. Give me a dumbed down version. 
not that I'm calling you dumb and I'm, uh, I, I, I have to protect myself for all this. And give me the version that someone like myself would Simpler. understand. You actually called yourself dumb. I did. You, all you right. Well, that's the fine. Dumbed down okay. version. Yeah. Okay. So. Good. Yeah. We're good. You know, treat yeah. me like Are a third grader. Are you asking me to do that or Callie? No, I'm asking Callie now. I'll come me. back to you. <laughs> Well, uh, kind of what Aaron said, you know, it depends on your market again. So who you're communicating to. So if you are, so say for one of us trying to communicate to someone of an older generation, uh, we're probably not going to reference, you know, we may not, we're not going to advertise or try to market to you via TikTok or, you know, Snapchat or reference anything of that matter. It's probably going to be more relatable. Um, so well, give, me an think, yeah, give me an example. I'm trying to think, Aaron, help me out here. I'm trying to think of like a good off the top of my head example. You may have a better one from prior, maybe previous experience. Like maybe with one of our clients. Effective multi-generational selling. What kind of well, example? Are you yeah. Like? Effective multi-generational selling. Sorry. <laughs> hey, all these I mean, big kill terms. me. Why don't you? <laughs> well, so how about you, 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 uh, you rep that band aid company. Yep. All right. So, uh, you're, you're trying to, who's your, your target market there? Well, I, and you would say, I mean, if you're like me and you're have a gold retriever that constantly injures you, <laughs> maybe that, but a lot of it is it's older generations, people with sensitive skin and, um, so it, it's like a more heavy duty bandaid. So really we're going for people. If you think about, you know, you're older and you know, when you pull off a bandaid, like it gets stuck, um, or it hurts. You know, or it it falls off. So kind of with that. Um, so going you know, after that. You know what you're saying is it doesn't sound super sexy, but once you see it on. Oh yeah. It's great. No, I'm just kidding. But it, you know, it does its, it does a job. So if you pull that okay. off, it doesn't hurt. No. So the cool thing about it is, and of course I'm like giving you know free marketing. Yeah. Well, so listen, make, make her big. <laughs> but I literally could be the face. I could be the face now of these band aids. Because I am notorious for, so this is where it comes in really handy to, if you're someone like me, this is where a product that can relate to people, my generation, but then also an older generation where it becomes more useful is I am notorious for band-aids fall off all the time. Like I'm that person that if you find band-aids around, like they just fallen off. And so the nice thing about it is the adhesive, it only comes off if you use alcohol to get it off, which is pretty cool. Like I need something to stay on and then not fall off in the pool. So uh, I guess that's the best example is that this appeals to me because I'm the one that my band-aids come off in the pool or like I'll find them on my couch and um, that's super gross. So, <laughs> but then if you're someone, you know, older generation where, you know, with your skin where you're dealing with band-aids and you know, it's falling off or, or like it hurts, it's got alcohol that releases in it too. That's kind of a cool thing. Wait a second. Um, so to take that band-aid off, you have to put alcohol on it? Yeah. And so, you know what I discovered? <laughs> we were saying this the other day is I, one of them was falling off and I was like, why is this coming off? And a girl we're working with, she was like the hand sanitizer, you're using hand sanitizer, with alcohol in it. And I was like, Oh, so oh, yeah. So you true. put alcohol on it and it helps it come off. So it comes off even almost, it's kind of like if you had, if when your bandage gets super wet and if you have like a wet bandage and just kind of like falls off, that's how you take it off. So oh. it, it, very good. So listen, so Aaron, I'm saying, that's what you're up with. <laughs> All right. No, that's great. But here, I actually, I feel much better now. I felt worse before I talked to you. So I feel we better We actually now. relate more than people think. Generationally, like people relate. It's just, you know, everyone has their set way of, I think that's the one thing Aaron was touching on was, you know, everyone communicates in different ways, but at the end of the day, we all relate in one way or the other. Like I can relate to someone who is 15 and also 60 years old, you know, same product. I mean, I can relate to a 60 year old with this product, and also I will admit my age, I'm 25 years old. So as a 25 year old, I can also relate to something that with this band aid, you know? Well, I so, think, well, first of all, let me tell you, I think it's uh, you talking for Aaron is very sexist. And uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. Obviously, it only it only took twenty minutes for yeah. the uh, obviously. Yeah. Well, we already have the heroin questions. Yeah. That point. So here's the thing, Aaron. I think along with uh, Hal Coleman, who's the best at this. By the way, in terms of marketing, I know he does pest control marketing, but in terms of marketing in general, by he's like a guru. He's as oh, yeah, good. He's unbeatable. He, yeah, he's unbeatable. Even by the Deej. 
I mean, I he's better than the DH. He really is. But uh, he's, you know, he starts with saying, you know, if uh, his his uh, how he presents is, uh, if you're like most of our customers, you have uh, you know sensitive skin, you have uh, challenges with it falling off in the pool, and y- your friends think you're gross because they keep finding band aids in your couch. Uh, I, Am I pretty close to the truth? And people say nod their head. And basically, you got your prospect saying yes four times in their head before they know what hit them, without yeah. talking about yourself. So that's his, that's his main thing, and that's what you did. I think the main difference between uh, you younger uh, crazy people uh, mm-hmm. is is not in the message, and it's not in the marketplace, which is the same thing. The, you, you people are trying to go. It's in simply the delivery system. It's in it's in the way you deliver that message to the marketplace. So, for instance, what what Aaron was talking about and confusing me with, <laughs> you explained by making a short video presentation about the product. And that's a way that people can just understand it now. That's the way your generation, in my humble opinion, uh, understands the marketplace. So a good headline, if you're like blah, 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 and then a video like yourself laughing about the, your dog licking your, your armpit. I think um, Callie also touched on a good point um, as far as focusing the pitch on the needs of the prospect. So, you know, there's this difference between the benefits of what you're selling or the um, features of what you're selling versus the benefits, right? There are features that might be, you know, very important to you as a product designer or as a salesperson that your prospect just doesn't care about, frankly. And the time you spend talking about it is time wasted that could have been better spent focusing on the benefits that they that directly address mm-hmm. their challenges or their needs, right? So, so to me, the challenge isn't just the delivery mechanism, because it is true, you know, that you have to deliver through a different channel of communication, but it's also about tailoring your pitch and focusing what you're talking about on the interests and the needs of the prospect. And that's not just an intergenerational question. That's something that you need to do custom fit for every prospect. You know, that's that research process. Yes, they, you know, there's standards across generations, but you really have to do that custom fit benefits analysis for every single person you sell to, because otherwise you run the risk of boring them to death talking about, you know, how your product's 15% better compared to the competitor and this, you know, 69 point analysis and they're, you know, drooling on the table. Yeah. I I think what Aaron said too, our generation, our generation, it's so weird saying that. Yeah. Um, You're speaking for the entire generation. In my, in my 25 (laughs) years, my long life here, my words of wisdom, but no, as a consumer, I mean, you know, and I think a lot of people can agree is we are so just there's such an influx of information that comes at us on a daily basis. Like, you know, and a lot of that is through social media. And so as a consumer, when you're talking to people of my generation, uh, they, they want to call us practical consumers, which I think is a good way to talk about how we shop. Um, kind of what Aaron was saying, like, we don't want to be bored with the long, you know, facts and whatnot. Typically, you know, they already have something specific in mind. So if you're looking for something like, I want a band aid that stays on, forever um you know you want to look for that and you want to know uh you know how it can solve my problem in like a short quick pitch and you know once you start hitting numbers and facts and stuff like that you totally lost us because like for me when it comes to numbers like instantly when i see like statistics or numbers i know that's terrible but it just it's like deer in headlights and you just kind of lose me and there's so much information out there like i mean how for me, for us, the biggest thing is my friends and I were joking about falling into the Instagram ad trap. How many times we've fallen where you're just on Instagram yeah. and a product and you bought straight from just an mm. ad. I mean, I'm oh, sure I'm sure you guys have fa- to the you got sucked in. You did, and you were you're just on Instagram looking at your or even like bloggers. I find myself too. I'm like, oh, I love this top, and then I kind of go through, and I'm like, they got me. They totally got me and my, you know, bank oh, account hates better. me for it. But that's what I'm saying is, is it, it's tricky because, you know, you've got consumers where we are so, we know kind of the selling pitch. So we like creative unique and you're in a day and age where it's becoming harder to become unique. So how do you trap us? And it's like, 
Instagram. I mean, how much, I can't tell you how many things I have. And my friends I were talking about falling into the Instagram ads. Have you ever, Bad. Aaron, have you ever got caught in the Instagram? Oh trap? yeah, they're good. You want to oh, see good. a sophisticated <laughs> algorithm. They, you know, you'll be, cause they intersperse them right amongst yeah. regular posts and they do it very well. So you'll be scrolling. And I found that Instagram more than any other platform is able to show me ads that I actually want to see which is to say like, oh, this is a product that I would want, you know, and that's a tough, that's a tough job in a lot of ways to not make the ad targeting ads um, consistently to me is really challenging and also doing so in a way that's cost effective under the assumption that, you know, 95% of the time, even if the ad is almost perfect and I'm like, wow, that's a product I want, I'm going to end up swiping to the next. Thing. So you're not going to get this guaranteed response, even if your targeting is nearly perfect. Yeah. You but, know, it, 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 you're the person looking at it needs to have a compelling interest in it for whatever reason. I mean, you're not going to, you know, talk somebody into something that they ultimately don't want, but I will say, by the way, uh, you may, you may or may not know this Chris Stone, who's being awfully quiet. During I this can't whole... get a word in edgewise. Okay, I'm okay. trying. You guys are off <laughs> okay. with four different more you can't, He's going to be a lawyer, that. by the way, Aaron, mm. which is which is great because the world needs another lawyer. That's good. You can you can add that to thing. But here, uh, in terms of marketing, uh, and then I think you uh, then I'll give you the floor. There was a. Uh, you're absolutely right there, Callie. Regarding, I still remember the Band Aid brand commercial, which was written by who do you know, Christo? The Band-Aid brand commercial, Barry Manilow, in your face. Useless Was knowledge. Really? Oh, oh, yeah. I actually and, know that name. <laughs> do you? Okay, so here's the, here's the commercial. <laughs> I am stuck on Band-Aids because Band-Aids stuck on me, and it really sticks to your fingers, and it sticks to your knees and toes. I am stuck on Band-Aid brand because Band-Aids stuck on me. I remember Boom. that. They brought that song back, actually, a couple years ago. They oh, that's good. They that campaign. I remember the back. That's probably tell why. You what. I, this band aid company that you're repping, uh, they, I know. They are so happy. What with is you the right name now? of this band aid company? Know. Comfort release. Comfort release. Oh, comfort you release. Gotta put you're it welcome. Everybody knows comfort release. Yeah, now they are. Well, Chris Stone, you were about to say something. Well, um, just as a as a tease, I do have a, a comment that I'd like to make, uh, if I could, and I'm I'm seeing some themes here. Uh, in both of what Aaron and Callie are saying. But before we do that, we're going to have to hear from our friends at Liber oh. Partners. Oh. Here at Liger Partners, we are marketing as a service. So what we do is we overlay marketing with high level strategy. We go into branding and we finish with execution for the same price as having someone in-house dedicated to your marketing, which we call a unicorn marketer. We know they don't exist, but we hope that you'll discover that as well. You could have a whole team of Ligers experienced in their own arenas of marketing, whether that be writing, whether that be design or video, podcasting, strategy, all of those arenas we have people for. Visit us today at ligerpartners.com and see what we can do for your business. That could be Dang. the loudest commercial I've ever yeah, heard. That was, uh, <laughs> so that, was that was a good commercial. He's good looking. Yeah. That Hamilton. Yeah. Freaking yeah. Hamilton. Well, and there and I did see Babyface. I oh, did yeah, see Aaron in the <laughs> <other> <laughs> commercial as well. Yeah. You, but only the back. Guest star. My five yeah. seconds of fame. Yeah. But you know exactly. which one it is. Compare that to uh, to my commercial. I have a commercial too that comes out, but it, you'll see that you know well, Hamilton. This is the, I almost look as good. Well, you just saw Generation good. Z. Yeah. Now uh, this is Generation Z Z Z. Well, if your sales team sucks and you don't know what to do, call D six seven eight nine one zero nine nine one two. Call D six seven eight nine one zero nine nine. Look oh at my that. Gosh. I'm telling you what. <laughs> that song reminds me, I think, of some like SNL skit or something. There's something that that song. Yeah, that's, good. <laughs> that's great. Something from the 19th You know, Dan, my yeah, great, yeah. great, that's great amazing. grandfather had yeah. a commercial oh, looked just like that. You ever see you ever see the uh what is it, the, the Tootsie Roll Pop commercial? You know, I'm just kidding. Yo, oh, oh yeah, the, the, in the black and white with the, the center. Oh, with yes. the owl? 
Yeah. But I, I love that the, uh, the giant head part. That's a, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, stick with me. I no, I, so so what I, where I was going uh, before we went into this uh, massive commercial break um, was, I you know, Aaron touched on it, and and so did Callie as well. Is that there's, you know, we're we're talking about these lines right of generations, and I think um, what hopefully is breaking down these 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 lines and blurring these lines is people are people are stopping their preconceived notions about other people, no, regardless of their age. And I think Gen Z has gone through a lot of these things like the, you know, the, the recession in 97, the student uh, loan debt crisis, now COVID. And so they have their, I believe, uh, you know, a little bit more empowered for, uh, for social change. And the preconceived notion from people that are our age, Dan, is that this is these people grew up, you know, and the internet was was already available, and they've always had a device in their hand ever since that they were they were very um, little, and so they're they're not paying attention, and they don't know anything, and all of these preconceived notions, I think, that goes on, and um, I I think Aaron touched on it about it being relational and really meeting people where they're at, regardless of their age. Um, income or anything. And in a sales and marketing, in a business standpoint, that's um, even more so important that you serve others in, in, in a business standpoint and not, and, and put aside the preconceived notions of, well, this person's 24, two years old or this person is is 64 years old they they don't know it they don't know anything they don't even know how to get on facebook or this 24 year old how can they know anything about selling right i think that is really what i'm getting out of this conversation besides where to buy band-aids that's what <laughs> i'm getting out of the conversation. i think i think you're absolutely right chris that's a really good and concise version of what it took me 15 minutes to say um <laughs> Yeah, I think that fundamentally, it's about kind of this authentic relationship, right? So I see a lot of marketing efforts directed towards, you know, Gen Z or millennials that just come off as they just look fake. It's clear that somebody looked up a, a meme or some kind of joke or some kind of uh, catchphrase and they were like, perfect, this is what the kids like. And then they just made it into right. an ad can. And that's not the strength. Uh, in my mind of older generations, the way that in, that we connect intergenerationally is by taking the things that each of us do well and each of us and the perspective that we have and sharing it collaboratively, right? So, mm -hmm. so Dan, Dan shouldn't go out and buy, you know, fidget spinners and uh, a jewel and try to, you know, come appeal to like 20 something. What you do <laughs> is... You know, what you take for that woman. And <laughs> Dan thinks Jewel is a I'm spinner. just sitting here picturing him with like a little fidget spinner, you know, like sit because fidget spinners yeah. crack me up to begin with. And then just like the jewel, just the combination <laughs> of the two. Oh, sure. I like have an image in my head and it is pretty funny. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, that would be that would be silly, but you know, it also wouldn't be very compelling. Like what I want from Dan is you know, an authentic Dan, what Dan does well. I need Dan's perspective. Dan fundamentally or older generation fundamentally see things differently than younger generations. And that perspective is invaluable. And when you try to adapt, you know, I know we've been talking about how to sell the Gen Z, but really like when you try too hard to adapt to our message, you run the risk of losing the value that you can bring. And Holy crap. Uh, let me tell you something. Write that one down. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. I'm actually going to keep that one. Make Not that everything nice else grabber. you said was garbage, but that was good. <laughs> And by the way, I'm not going to, you know, I do this with my kids. If you praise one kid, that doesn't mean that I'm dooming the other to lifelong failure. I don't hate I was, the other. I no, it's really okay. I'm, the, I'm an older child. No, I trust oh. me. I know how this works. Okay, good. So I thought that was, and. <laughs> what is like, he's like, I, it's so weird because I'm, I'm walking a little tightrope for no reason whatsoever. <laughs> no, but what is it, I, guinea pig child? I, I think you're absolutely right with, with what you said there. And and uh, authentic, authenticity is is the key. And that's why generally what I always do, that's why I talk about embarrassing things about myself to 
to uh, I, uh, just yesterday um, I listened to my my son uh, talk to his friend and um, yeah I'm gonna tell the story okay so he was talking to <laughs> he was talking to his friend and his friend was saying, you know when he's in the bathroom with a bunch of other guys you know sometimes he gets stage fright and so Matthew just told him what I taught him when he was a little kid we, and I don't know if you don't know this but multiples of nine. I mean, it's, it's the craziest thing. If you get caught and, you know, you just, it, you're in a problem, 9, 18, 27, 36. By the time you get to 54, you're, you're, you're doing fine. Anyway, so he was explaining this to him. And, uh, and, and the guy's like, what are you talking about? I've never heard of that. And I'm like, I thought everybody knew that. Like, that's a, did you ever hear that? No, uh, I heard the what picture everybody uh, naked or whatever it was when you get nervous. Isn't that the one that everyone's no, in their oh, underwear about, or whatever? No, I, yeah, okay, so it's, it's stage fright um, when you're in the bathroom with five other guys and everybody's trying to go. Okay, yeah, that's a little okay, different. Yeah, slightly, so, yeah, no, I, I imagine okay. you, would, you wouldn't know I like that. The nine, I like the nines one better. Yeah. Okay. We've all been there, right, Kelly? Now I see how that, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we've I mean, all it's, been there, yeah. It's a challenge. Yeah. But just telling you that story lets you know that everything else I say after that is going to be true. You know, I mean, I'm, I have nothing to hide. I have nothing to change. And, and I think that's the most important thing in marketing as well, because, you know, I marketing, the delivery system is a hundred different ways. One of them is talking, <laughs> you know, and, and, the, and the same thing with your, uh, with your headlines and your ads and all the stuff that you do, they need to be authentic Lee coming from you. So if I start saying, you know, I don't even know what the hell a jewel is. What is it? It's a, uh, <laughs> what is a jewel? It, honestly, the best way. I can, yeah. It looks like somebody is, uh, you honestly look like you're sucking on a USB stick is honestly the best way I can describe it. It's like a little thing. It's, and it's a, a vaping device. Vaporizer. Oh, it's a vaping. Yeah. yeah okay. It's a vape. Yeah. 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 Really? But it doesn't look like a cigar or something like that. No, no. Kelly, Kelly loves say, hearing you. Well, I screwed up the song. So it really sticks to your, to your, to yeah, the you, second oh, verse, I don't yeah, well, that. It sticks to your toes and knees. I am stuck on Bende Brancos. Bende stuck Bende on me. Stuck yeah, on I, I transposed okay. it, and so I screwed the whole thing up. All right. Well, you see, you got the whole thing. So listen, it's all authentic. I'll tell you what I, I tell you what else I, I, I know from uh, from this conversation and, and, and from your generation. Uh, and I guess my, my generation said it too. Uh, but man, your lives are too easy. I mean, you've never mm -hmm. really known any kind of you, you've never been hungry. I love when people say that. Well, no, I, but really, I mean, it's just too easy. But I, I think it's not a bad thing. I don't think you can. I think because of that, you don't know how strong you really are. And you really will be stronger because all these problems that you're worried about, right now, people are worried about all certain things that are going to happen in the future. I'm telling you right now, you can handle it. Both of you guys and most people that I've met in the world are able to handle just about anything that's thrown at you. Don't worry. Deal with it when it happens. You can do it. And uh, we have a, I have two kids, but my youngest one, Sophie Bell, she's uh, 18. But when she was like, uh, she was tiny uh, to the point where she like, if mommy was upset, only so she would push everybody away. Sophie is taking care of mommy. And if in our house, if there's any big event that goes wrong, if there's any you know, she's, she's a girl, so she's, you know, crazy in all times. But if there's a big event, a big challenge, if a tree falls on the house and people are freaking out, Sophie takes control. That's her personality. She's the one I try. In fact, we had a conversation. I said, Sophie, if I'm ever in the hospital and I'm dying and I, all that stuff is, that you know, something has to be taken care of, I'm talking to you. Nobody else comes in the house. You're the one who's in charge. She's got that. And so you guys can handle a lot more challenges than you think you can. I'm very impressed with this generation. I think you I guys. Think COVID's are, are teaching awesome. us that too. I think at least I could. I can't speak for everybody. I know for me, COVID really showed that. First of all, we I, call it the Chinese communist virus, but you can go ahead, whatever you want. <laughs> we didn't prep you before that. <laughs> the Chinese you, uh, communist you know what? Party virus. I, I wish I could say I was shocked, but yeah, um, that's hilarious. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, what Dan said, but yes. you know, I think that that is one thing. And, and I know a lot of, like, I have a sister, a younger sister who just graduated college. And I know that generation's nervous stepping into the market now, 
you know, after everything, but it has really shown, I think how just throughout this time, like to tie back to what you're saying about marketing is how important it is to be authentic and genuine. That is so much of what everyone is seeking right now in just this time. And with everything going on, everyone just wants honest, honest people. Honestly, I feel like that's the bottom line. And you just want to feel authentic and yes, frankly, <laughs> frankly <laughs> wants to say hi, but I think that that's so important is keeping that authentic voice because that is what speaks volumes yeah, across ultimately, so many generations. Very good. Yeah. And uh, it, it, I'd like to hear, uh, you know, in closing something coming from, from Aaron too. Uh, uh, hang on, Dan. Um, we have a special guest um, that uh, we've asked to join um, because I, we, I spoke to uh, her earlier today. So uh, really quickly, I'd like to bring on a special guest. This is Diane Bogino from Performance yeah. Strategies. And hi, Diane. Um, Hello. We spoke, yeah, yeah. Uh, Diane and I um, and and the Deej are in a mastermind uh, group that meets every uh, Wednesday morning, except for whatever reason, Dan decided that uh, he wasn't gonna join this morning. So uh, <laughs> we'll give him a little grief on, on that yeah. one. But Diane uh, does, uh, you know, customized uh, training programs and and gets, uh, you know, knee deep in analysis. And it just so happened she's in the process of developing a customized training program for uh, people to work with Gen Z and had just, uh, you know, was was talking about this report. So I thought it would be really good to bring her on and maybe br have her bring some perspective to the conversation. Yeah, y'all were talking about old crazy people and I show up, right? <laughs> 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 yeah, I love what they're talking about in terms of sales because you're going to be, this generation is going to be selling itself to the job market here very, very soon. And they're even a larger market yep. than the millennials were. So they're going to be in the workforce a long, long time. So the uh, job force needs to prepare for them. Well, it's interesting. So you're saying the job force needs to prepare for them. They need to prepare themselves for the job force. Absolutely. It's a two way street. Yeah. Um, but this generation is looking for special things from the job uh, force that maybe other generations weren't. Uh, this gener And you two can correct me if I'm wrong, Aaron and Callie, uh, but looking for a lot of development opportunities, uh, not necessarily uh, formal schooling. They're looking for organizations that have a song uh, a strong sense of, of social justice and involving and in, in being involved in solving world problems. So if a company's culture does not appeal to them in that manner, then they need to go elsewhere. In other words, the company may want them, but do they want the company? Mm -hmm. hmm. And I, I think, sorry, go ahead, Dan. No, sorry, no, I was just going to say every company wants a song. I was about to start singing. So you better <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Okay, then uh, I don't have any songs for you, but I, I think, you know, I've heard before this kind of comment, I, you know, about basically you should, the job should not curate themselves to the people trying to work at them that like, you know, if you have all these needs from your work, you should be happy to have a job, you should be, you know, you should settle and, and it's, and it's true. Yeah, you know, there, sometimes you just need to work somewhere, but fundamentally, if employers want to attract the best quality talent, the most passionate people and the most hardworking people, then you have to keep them interested. You have to keep them engaged. And so, you know, this isn't just a question of, you know, pleasing Gen Z, but it's also a question of how do companies attract top talent? And that changes with every generation because the priorities of each generation and really the priorities of each individual person are different. And so, Mm -hmm. They need a That's reason right. to be there. You can get you can get them fifty percent, but if you want a hundred percent, one hundred and ten percent, you're going to have to throw a bone here and there. Absolutely. And, and, the, yeah. and transparency, I think, is a huge importance for that. A lot of people are seeing, you know, you want a company to be transparent, like you want those open lines of communication. I think that's that's the bottom line. You know, is it's just simple communication and and people being able to communicate and talk and have conversations. Uh, there's no, there's really no, you know, people always want to ask, well, what is this magic, you know, formula or, or whatever. But I think the bottom line is it's very simple. It's just being able to be honest, authentic, and have those open lines of conversation and feel, you know, like we can relate and, you know, that you're coming at me in a genuine, authentic way. And the same with companies, you know, you want to feel when, you know, this generation looking for jobs, you want to knowing that, yeah, you know, 
like Aaron was saying, sometimes you got to work somewhere as they call it paying your dues, but also, you know, it's like, I want to give to you, you give to me. So a give and take relationship. So it's mm -hmm. like any relationship understanding that it's a two way street. On Mutual both respect, ends. right. Absolutely. Mutual respect. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Dan, you're going to love this because Diane did send me this report uh -huh. and uh, it's like the national high school scholarship society. Is that mm -hmm. right? Um, so, Diane. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so check this out. These are their, um, from the survey, this massive survey that they did, these are their expected career paths, uh, where they, where they expect to work at in the future. And you can see medicine, health, where this, this kind of goes into what, uh, Gen Z is, is in terms of, um, you know, that, that uncertainty and the, and social empowerment and wanting to be, you know, but well, let's find sales on here, Dan, you want to find sales? <laughs> yeah. Hang yeah, on, I'm, still going. I'm still oh, going. I'm still going. There it is. Six percent. <laughs> I'll tell you when sales gets in there. Uh, when they get married and have a kid. I'll tell you when sales gets in there. <laughs> when they get a house and they have a mortgage. I'll tell you what sales gets in there. The day they realize that money at that stage of their life is more important than uh, feeling good about the place you work at. But mm -hmm. I'm not saying it's wrong to uh, aspire to do everything that you want to do right now. I'm just saying that there comes a time in your life where you say, you know, money's of a higher value right now because it's going to give you the life and the lifestyle that you want. And that's one of the greatest things about this generation, the previous generations and the one after is that when it comes down to it, and it's even more so when I hear like uh, when I hear you uh, people of all generations speaking, you're almost like your regular human beings. <laughs> <laughs> You're almost like you it's Don't just it. like it <laughs> always was. It's the, it's something mm -hmm. you could hang your hat on. You all have the same thing in common, and that is you're American. It's in your DNA to excel for yourself, for your family, and for your community. And if you just keep on working every day, even no matter what direction you're in, just work hard in that direction, opportunities will come your way. I thank you all for being here today. I can't tell you how enlightening it has been for me. Chris Stone, once again, uh, taking us uh, to the top. You may not know this, but I got here one minute before. 40 <laughs> seconds, actually. 40 seconds before, and I had three large drinks from here. I literally may explode. We got to go. Go out and get them today. <laughs>